Hi, my name's Amy Robbins. I'm team leader of primates at Auckland Zoo and I'm standing in the middle of a construction zone in one of the brand new orangutan and Siamang habitats. This is part of the Southeast Asian Jungle Track development and this is the biggest development in Auckland Zoo's history. Like any good modern zoo, science is behind everything we do and that feeds into how we care for our animals but also how we go about designing the habitats for the animals in our care. Behind me we've got the new primate habitat area. Beyond that there's the new habitat for tigers and otters and we've got our swamp forest habitat which is going to be under a massive tropical dome. And behind me you'll see already what we call the canopy climbers, the, the metal structures starting to get hidden within natural planting. So key to getting the right design here is giving them opportunity to stay off the ground and feel comfortable off the ground. Hello, I'm Monica Lake and I'm the project director for the Southeast Asia Jungle Track. We thought about how our visitors would be entering the Southeast Asia Jungle Track. Just like if you were on a jungle track in the wild, you would open up into a clearing and have these views. Like many zoos in the world, Auckland Zoo is almost 100 years old. Renewal is a really important part about being a good modern zoo. The habitat that the orangutan and the siamang are occupying is every bit as wild and enjoyable as the pathway that the visitors have on the jungle track or on the deck of the Tapuna Cafe. We needed to reach broadly to understand what in all the world there was around the best in animal welfare in visitor engagement, the best in innovation and sustainable design. Studio Hanson Roberts, for example, was the landscape design team. The design expertise combined with the local uh, project management expertise, we have Becca, we have NZ Strong who provided constructability advice from early days. One of the primary drivers was enabling our life science staff to be part of the team that designed and built this project. They work with the animals every day and they also have significant work that they do in the wild. It was the enablement of a project that could never have been done by a single individual, only by that working together over a long period of time. Hi, I'm Hugo and I'm the horticultural manager here at Auckland Zoo and very excited to be part of this big new project. See that cabbage tree? That was growing near the central lake. It was not part of the project planting plan at all, but it needed to go from where it was and so we managed to transplant it and bring it over here and include it as part of the habitat. Rather than just relying on the trees for the orangutans to be able to use, these canopy climbers have also been, they're kind of like sculptural trees made out of steel. They have been woven into this landscape so the trees get a break and the orangutans can uh, enjoy wherever they want to go to. We are in a location that's right adjacent to where the entrance to this project will be and this is what we call a rock forest. It made sense to build on that as part of the entry experience, particularly because Southeast Asia, the Indonesian region, it's, you know, it's part of the ring of fire. There's, there's many, many volcanoes. It's common ground that typifies what we have here in New Zealand. You might not realise, but there is a science to the way that we care for our animals at Auckland Zoo. And just like science, welfare is a tangible, measurable thing that can be observed. This is why we closely monitor the animals in our care to make sure that they have the very best lives possible and often that means even better than their wild counterparts. To do this we use the five domains of animal welfare which is the animal welfare strategy adopted by the World Association of Zoos and Aquariums. And what that does is it looks at the four physical domains of an animal's welfare. So we're measuring health, nutrition, behaviour and their physical environment. And so that encompasses their physical well-being. And those four states feed into the animal's overall effective state or their mental well-being. In this particular habitat we have eight of these canopy climbers 
And the way that we designed them was to take into consideration the animal's physical needs, their behavioural needs, but also their health needs as well. So these are designed to create an arboreal environment for our animals. And what that does is it allows their siamangs and their orangutans to travel, to rest and to feed all above the ground. So they don't have to come to the ground to do that because they're not designed for that. This tree way over here, Casamaroa edulis, or white sapote tree. And um, big old tree, never transplanted one before, but I know that they coppice really well and they can really regrow new growth from any area within the trunk. One of the very big canopy tree species that we needed to source as the principal home and habitat area for the orangutans and Siamang gibbons. It weighed 15 tonnes and it's in the process of putting on new foliage now so it will get a lot more greener than what it is now. And one of the key challenges was normally with every project within the zoo the landscape component is what you do at the end but with this particular project the landscape component had to go in first. Everything that you see here now wasn't built it was all strategically done afterwards so the trees could go in first and at least have one to two years of establishment time and so we're hoping that this is going to be very successful and if it is it will be one of the most green and tree inhabited environments for orangutans even worldwide that are within zoos. All the places and spaces that we build reflect our animals natural environments you can see how all these mature trees that we've transplanted from other parts in the site um, have been placed to create this special and complex way in which the orangutans and the siamangs are able to move from canopy climber to tree to canopy climber. One of the special things about the canopy climber is that it isn't just a design that's fabricated for to look good, it's a design specifically detailed to respond to our orangutan and siamang um, behaviors. The paint on this canopy climber is a special paint that has the same quality and the same reflectivity as the natural trees, but it also uh, reflects heat, so it's cold to the touch. So all these kinds of things, what it feels like, making sure that all the components are sensitive to the ways in which the orangutans and the siamangs will be using them. So you can see, even though it's a solid panel um, and would be like a traditional fence material, it, it allows this sort of uh, veil-like quality. So it's, it's almost like a lace curtain. What you see here is the line of the posts that will hold those panels. And clearly it's not a straight line, it's actually mimicking nature and I think that's probably one of the guiding principles to copy nature and not other zoos. Here we have a yellow guava, loquats. This is an evergreen magnolia. Oh look, there's some buds on it. What's been great about this particular habitat that we're creating here is I've managed to introduce a lot of fruit species that are also subtropical in and of themselves. This is the rose apple. It will produce some crops as well over time and come up and uh, create just a great understory even for these uh, sculptural trees, these canopy climbers through here. Tropical produce being produced in here that I'm sure the animals will be delighted with. Nutrition is one of the five domains of animal welfare and it's one that we put a lot of thought and a lot of effort into, particularly for our primates who have very specific nutritional needs. And what I've got here is an example of our orangutan diet. Each day they get a huge variety of mostly vegetables. We're looking at what our animals would naturally eat in the wild. And so for orangutans, they eat a lot of leaf material, they eat wild fruit and wild vegetables. And so browse is a really important part of their diet every day, not only because it's good for them nutritionally, 
um, but also because of the enrichment value it has. It's all about stripping the bark off and getting to that pith or that inside um, of the branch and it's about choosing all the delicious parts of the leaf that they like. But they also get things like pumpkin and cucumber, a whole wide variety of fruits and vegetables that changes every day and it also changes seasonally and they're on a rotating fortnightly diet. So it all sounds very complicated but that just demonstrates the level of care that we put into the nutrition for these animals. This is one of our arboreal feeders and we've designed these so that we can feed our orangutans and our siamangs in the canopy climbers above the ground. We use a drill bit that winds the feeding mechanism up and down which is on a pulley inside this pole and there's a basket at the top that we can fill with vegetables and with browse and all their favourite foods and then we wind that back up and let the animals safely out into the habitat so that they can feed arboreally. Throughout both of the orangutan and siamang habitats we've got lots of aerial pathways and so what that means is that in addition to the trees and the canopy climbers we've got lots of different ropes. Part of the design process is to look at how these animals actually move. This one here is what we call an ascender. It allows the animals to move up and down and you'll see that they never touch the ground. Um, and we've also got these pathways that go along between the canopy climbers um, throughout the habitat between um, the trees and what we are creating here are arboreal pathways for the animals so they can move about above the ground as they would in the wild and as we'll have both orangutans and siamang within these habitats we've catered to both of their hand sizes to enable them to travel comfortably throughout their habitats so for the orangutans we've gone for the bigger 48 millimeter diameter ropes and for the siamang we've gone for the 32 millimeter diameter ropes Behind me you can see these poles up here and this is what allows our orangutans and siamangs to get out of these habitats and out onto the aerial pathways. So what's going to happen is there'll be a rope that connects one of the canopy climbers um, straight over to this pole here. There'll be a gate system where the animals go through and they actually climb up inside the pole. There's going to be ropes up inside so they can climb right up to the top. And when they get to the very top, they're then on the aerial pathway network and get right out around the zoo and explore. And the view up there is pretty incredible. got Dan here who's one of the riggers who's here today to do something really exciting and put up um, the lines that are going up between the two habitats, is that right? Yep, that's the process. Once we've secured all our stuff on the ground, we'll be rigging ropes, getting two guys up the towers and hauling these things into position. These poles are all 20 to 25 metres above the ground and at the very top of these poles here are uh, like a little door and we as keepers we can open and shut that door and it's designed so that it's high enough that the animals aren't going to drop down and they're not going to hurt themselves and orangutans and siamangs don't tend to just fling themselves on the ground for no reason <laughs> so they'll be safely up on the pathways. I'm standing in one of two shared shelters outside one of the habitats and what our shared shelters are designed to do is it's a space where we bring our visitors and our animals together so we're sharing a space. It's also designed to bring the orangutans and the siamangs together so they're sharing their space. We've got these incredible training walls that's going to allow us to do operant conditioning with our animals and being able to showcase that important relationship we have with our siamang and our orangutan to the visitors. So what they'll be doing is sitting behind this panel and we'll be able to ask for all these behaviours that we do with our animals on a regular basis that allow us to care for them um, and we'll be able to show public uh, just the important relationship that we have with our animals, how we actually get them to do certain things like take a voluntary injection or check the state of their teeth or their mouth or or take their temperature, we can do that all in these training walls here. And a really good example of that is how we've brought our orangutans home from around a park. Voluntarily, they gave us their shoulder, we gave them their injections, there was no stress involved, and that enabled us to give them a really complete physical health check before they came back to Auckland.
It was a culmination of well over 12 months of training with a big team of people. And that's just one example of the way that we train our animals and the benefits of training with our animals. This morning we're about to put the orangutans out into their habitat. So it's been building for such a long time. There's so much excitement in our team right now and we're just, um, just chomping at the bit to get the orangutans out. <laughs> okay, ready. Is that a foot? <gasps> Yay! Hey Charlie! Well done! Oh, look at them! <laughs> this is the culmination of all of these years of hard work that we've been through and today is the day that we're finally getting to put that all into practice and just to see them in here is it's incredible, I can't even describe it. This is just one of the best days of my career so far. <laughs>